Hi everyone and welcome to the French Watch Collector. Today on the bench, we have a very rusty icon. We have a, a Cartier, a Cartier tank, you see. And you can see the, wa the watch has a rough life. Uh, yeah, some rust on the hand there. The dial as well is a bit damaged. The gold plating is not that good. So the goal there would be to, yeah, to bring back this watch to, to this original glory. Uh, so it looks like there is quite a lot of work. Um, so first we are going to remove the, the bracelet. We are going to disassemble the watch and see what we can find inside. And uh, yeah, we have a lot of work to do as well on the case with the gold plating, which is uh, pretty much wear down. So I will try to replate this watch a bit uh, later on. Uh, but first, yeah, like I said, we need to remove. And you see the case, uh, there is four, four screws, two on each side. So I'm going to remove this, uh, this screw there. The screws are, are gold plated as well. And you can see there actually the gold plated in some places is, uh, is very faded. Um, so yeah, it's uh, yeah, it would be nice to 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 bring to put some gold back on uh, on the case. Okay, so this screw there is a bit uh, <laughs> doesn't want to really cooperate with me, so I just try to remove it. No, it doesn't want to turn. So just keep it a, a couple more turn with the with the screwdriver, and yeah, we should be able to remove this screw there. So when the screws are removed, you see there the we can open the case like in the middle there in the half. So actually the, the Cartier tank, you see that uh, the name comes from the shape of this watch. Like if you look at it from the both, above, it looks like uh, a tank on the two sides being the chain of the, of the tank. Uh, so yes, that's a very iconic. And you can see there the glass is uh, damaged as well. So we will polish, we try to polish the glass as well. So we are going to remove now the, the mechanism and the dial, which is uh, still in a case back. But first I will try to see to align the ends. Yeah, it is the hand are very, very rusty. Uh, so yeah, we try to remove the rust a bit later on. So I try to remove them with my Presto tool, but cannot go underneath there. I could not manage to go underneath the, the hand. You see that? It doesn't want to grab. So I would just do it with my uh, a pair of leather there. I would just go underneath, underneath the hand and just lift them up very gently there. Quite tight, tight actually. I don't know if it's a rust or, but yeah, it was a bit difficult to remove this hand. But yeah, I managed to do it. I'm really looking for what I can find inside uh, underneath this dial because or obviously like already the the outside it doesn't look that good. So the inside would be the big question what we can find inside. But we should we should find out very soon. Okay, just removing gently, like popping up the mechanism with the dial, there we go. It's out there. You can see the case back. There is no, yes, yeah, there is a mark on it. So it was from a previous service. So inside look okay. So this is a dial, you see so on the dial, there is some rust. I don't know if I would be able to, to remove that. Oh no, look at the mechanism. Uh, that's not a Cartier, yeah, that's a goal. I It's another brand, but that's not a Cartier. So that's a, the first bad news on the watch. I don't know what happened, but because this Cartier, this Cartier, this watch, actually they use an ETA movement uh, with some parts which are marked and a bit different with for, 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 for Cartier, but it's an ETA movement. So they put exactly the same ETA movement, but from another brand. So maybe the original movement was totally damaged with rust, like you see on the, on the hand and on, on the dial. And they just changed it with another one, which is obviously cheaper because it's not a Cartier. So for now, I will remove the, the dial, just store it away in, a, in, in this little box. And we will uh, do it later. And I managed to find online uh, a real Cartier uh, movement uh, for, for this watch. So basically, like I will remove this, um, this Pagol movement. And you can see the difference there. You see the, the gold on the main spring assembly on top of the balance. And obviously, the Cartier sign. So yeah, that's a proper movement. And obviously, I will disassemble and uh, clean clean this movement, and we will reassemble it and put it on the watch. And so basically, the watch will be uh, a lot more genuine than uh, with this. Uh, it's not a fake movement. It's basically the same movement. It's an ETA movement, but not the one for Cartier. So that's not good. I tried to release the power there, but it's stuck. Like, it doesn't want to unwind. I'm releasing the crown, but the movement doesn't want to unwind. So something is blocking the movement. So that's not really good. You see, like it doesn't. I'm holding the click spring, but it doesn't want to release the power. 
So, well, okay, we'll have to release the power a different way, but we'll, uh, we will adapt. So first, as always, I will remove the balance assembly just to make sure I doesn't damage it during the, during the disassembly because it's a very fragile element of the watch. So removing the screw there. Yeah, and removing this, uh, this balance assembly there, just using a screwdriver blade just to lift it up slightly. There we go. And now I should be able to, to, to grab it and take it out of the, of the movement. Perfect. There you go. Very gently. You can see there at the bottom, actually, that it's an ETA movement, uh, with the, with the number there. Um, yeah, like I said, the mass, the mass range is, um, it was the entry line from Cartier. Uh, obviously, like the case is made of uh, silver with uh, a gold plating, so it's not made uh, with like full gold. So that was already one way to save a bit of money because obviously silver is cheaper than gold. And it's not a Cartier movement. They just bought a, or they just got a, an ETA movement that they were just redecorating a bit for, for Cartier. But it's not an in-house movement from, uh, from Cartier. You even see there the, the ETA number and uh, the ETA logo under uh, under the balance assembly. So that was a way as well to save some money. And obviously, the, the watch uh, was cheaper than the standard uh, tank. So the, the MERS range was yeah cheaper than the, the standard range. So it was their entry line if you want. And they used uh, all this trick to, to bring the price, obviously, of production, the cost price a bit lower. Uh, to be able to sell it to, to, to the hand customer with a, with a cheaper price. Okay, so now I'm going to remove um, the, the train of wheel bridge. Just removing these two screws there. And you can see even with Cartier, it has its own number, like the, the mechanism is 76-1. Uh, uh, so that's a Cartier movement number, but it has as well an ETA, an ETA number that you can see at the, at the bottom, which is a 2512. Um, so yeah, it's weird. Like he has a Cartier, like an in-house movement from Cartier, but it's as well an ETA movement with the ETA number. And, uh, I already restored, a, a Cartier tank. Uh, I mean, a must from a must Cartier tank. And it was exactly the same movement inside. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it was, like I said, a way to bring the, the price down a bit. Okay, reverse 3D screw there. You see I'm turning the, in the opposite direction for the crown wheel. As always, when you have a screw in the center, uh, it's, uh, it's reverse threaded. Ah, you can see there's some, uh, some rust damage underneath. And maybe that's why, you know, when I was releasing the power, maybe the rust was, was too much friction, so I was not able to release the power. So obviously, um, when the part will be fully disassembled, the, the movement will be fully disassembled, all the part we, we go into the cleaning machine. And uh, we'll see after we improve uh, the result and obviously the, the friction there by, by uh, removing the rust here. Okay, so now we have the removing the main spring bridge there. Again, with two screws. Three screws, sorry, was a third one there. So underneath here, we'll have the, the main spring assembly. There we go. And you can see the, the main spring, as the main spring, uh, as I'm eating this beautiful, like gold color underneath. There we go. Just taking it out there. So you see, that's what the diff one, one of the difference with the, with the first uh, ETA movement that was inside the watch. Uh, yeah, there is uh, like, yeah, a couple of differences. Okay. So now we move to the dial side and I'm going to disassemble the, the keyless work, which is pretty straightforward. We have a plate there keeping in place uh, the minute wheel. Just taking out this plate. We had we have the minute wheel there. This uh our wheel, uh center wheel, sorry, with the cannon pinion. We're now just removing the screw. We have the setting lever spring on the top there, like an intermediate wheel, and we have the standard like the yoke with the yoke spring that I'm holding with my uh, plastic stick there, just to make sure it doesn't fly across the room because they can fly. Trust me, they can fly, yes. And uh, yeah, here we go. That's the last couple of parts. Perfect. That's the last, uh, the pinion there. We are cleaning now. I'm cleaning the the jewel 
with uh, with some peg wood there just to remove any uh, dried up oil or grease just to make sure uh, yeah it, it will clean easier if you want when I put it in inside the, the washing machine just try to remove the rust there as well with a, a piece of uh, peg wood as much as I can it's not too deep so you see like it's just like rusted on the surface so that's a uh, very good news when I when I with the already the when I Going with the peg wood, like it he come off, so that's a uh, very good news. Just disassembling the barrel there, barrel assembly. So removing the lid there. We have the barrel arbor in the middle. Like that's look clean actually inside. You see the the spring. Removing the barrel arbor, the spring looks uh, good. Like uh, and uh, the inside of the barrel was sometime. Yeah, you can see some uh, old grease, dried up grease, and some. Uh, somewhere you know like some uh, metal flake or anything like but that looks quite that, that looks quite good yeah okay now i'm just cleaning the pivots you see there with uh, just like slight polish on a pivot just to make sure as well it would be easier to clean just placing back the balance wheel on the on the movement there you go and that would be a safe place to keep it during cleaning just placing it back with the with the screw in place. Perfect. I'm placing all the parts in this little basket, and that will go through the cleaning cycle. Uh, all the parts will be clean, and we will after reassemble the parts. I would like to to use this moment during cleaning to share uh, and to thanks uh, the name of my patrons. So John, Tim, and Gregory, thank you very much for supporting me on my patrons. Uh, that means the, the, the world to me because, yeah, it's a hobby that takes me a lot of time, a lot of energy and, and money as well. So having people supporting me on Patreon, uh, so that's thank you very much for that. And if you want to, to support me, you have the links uh, down in, uh, in the description for my uh, Patreon page. Here we go now and we are on a wrenching stage. And obviously, if you like the video, you can subscribe to my channel. I try to put like one, one video a week. Uh, if you like, push a, push a like button on a, on the video, subscribe, and you will get notified when uh, when I put a, a new video. So thanks for subscribing in uh, in advance. Okay, so now the parts are fully dried, and we can start the the reassembly. So first, like I, what I like to do, uh, I like to oil the balance assembly. So for that, we have a, a shock setting on the top there. So I'm removing this uh, little spring. So this is, you see, I open it with the tweezer, lifting it up very gently, and now I'm grabbing the jewel there. Oh, it just jumped. I didn't go very far. So the goal there, I will clean the jewel, and uh, the next step will be, that's the step we are right now, I will just treat it in epilam, uh, just to make sure the oil stay at the right place. It, uh, it, it will help keeping it at the right place. And now I'm, drop, I'm dropping a, a drop of oil, right in the center of the jewel. Just putting a bit more oil because the first time it was not enough. So that's very important to put it right into the center and the right amount. And when it's done, I put the chaton back on the top there. There we go. Fully gloss, fully oiled. Now I can place it back into the balance. Oh, just <laughs> went the wrong side there. Just place it the correct side, just to make sure we find the right place. Just very gently nudge it around until you fall into the, there we go, perfect. And when it's done, I just close this little spring there on the top. Use my, my tweezers, like I, I like to use some uh, very thin tweezers just to close it. And now I just do the same on the other side. Just I'm going to clean it. Treat it in epilam like uh, like I did on the other one, and uh, putting a, a small drop of oil right into the middle. And the, this time I treat in epilam as well the escape and uh, and the pallet fork uh, because yeah we'll have to oil them a bit later on. We have to oil the pallet fork for for the same reason like we do on the on the balance. Um, yeah, I like to yeah to make sure the oil stay at the right place. We treat them in epilam. I'm just cleaning the pivot point of the escape and the pallet fork. 
and putting a drop of oil like we did on the other side in the center and putting back the chaton on the top. Like you cannot see on but these are really small, really, really small. So at the beginning, when you start, like it's a bit, <laughs> it's quite difficult to handle because they are small and you're not really used to it. But after with practice, you need to use like no, no, no strength at all because or else they can jump into your tweezers. But yeah, with practice, you become better and better and more familiar with it. Okay, so now the balance is uh, fully uh, oiled. We can start reassembling the mechanism. Um, so first we have this wheel that come underneath the main spring barrel assembly, barrel assembly, sorry. So there, there we go. You see it goes underneath, so we have to put it on the top there. When it's done, I can put uh, the bridge on the top that will keep everything in place. Just need to go very gently and make sure you align everything. So yeah, Cartier is uh, obviously it's very famous. It's like very luxury, like it's famous as well for the for the jewelry. Um, but I think actually Cartier, a huge part of their business, if it's not maybe the biggest part of their business, is actually watches. So they make watches like like the tank, which is very iconic, like the Santos, and they they make. Uh, a, a lot of uh, other watches as well and some very exclusive watches. Um, but yeah, a lot of people know Cartier for the jewelry, but they make very, very good watches uh, for, for men and women. And uh, actually right now there is a, a big hype around Cartier and uh, a lot of prices from Cartier is uh, coming to start to come, uh, start to come uh, up again. And uh, yes, there is some very, very, very nice vintage uh, vintage model. Uh, so if you if you have a chance to to work, if you want to start to work on a Cartier, or if you're interested in a Cartier, it's a very, very good brand to 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 work on or to to have. Yeah. Okay. So now just putting the ratchet wheel, just to make sure align with the bilar board underneath the square the square part there, and we can secure that with the with the screw. Perfect, so now we're gonna assemble the, the train of wheel, starting with the escape. Here we go, you see that? Just when you sit down and go into the to the bottom jewel there, in the the pivot point, like found this uh, found this jewel and found this place. In the same there, till it stays stay fully straight. Yeah, here we go. So obviously one one thing as well, I already talked about it in some other video, is like like this is obviously a, a woman watch, so the watch is smaller. Most of the time, it's mean as well. The movement is smaller, so I don't advise people to start on a woman watch because the parts being very small, it makes them like more difficult to handle. So it's better to start on a big watch or even on a pocket watch, and after later work on a, on a woman watch. For example, like me, sometimes uh, obviously I like to to please my wife, so. I found an, a nice watch or, or, or friend or family member, if I found a nice woman watch or if somebody asked me to, to redo a woman watch, uh, I do it obviously, but it's more difficult to, to work on this movement because of the size rather than, uh, rather than on the men movement, which are generally bigger, bigger movement or obviously like the biggest movement are on, on pocket watches. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't advise people to start working on this, uh, on this movement, but after like, it's exactly the same way than, uh, it's like most of the, uh, the mechanism does the same, obviously than on a woman, on a man wash, sorry, but yeah, it's just the size. Sometimes it's reduced and yeah, it's a bit more difficult to work on. Okay. So now we move on on uh, keyless work. Putting the setting lever there. There we go, it's in place. I just oil already, you see all the all the pivot points. So like that after I'm ready to put all the parts. I don't have to stop and oil and uh, go back go go back to my oiler. All the all the points that need to be oiled are done. Um so yeah. This is a tricky that I always on a on a keyless work as a tricky part just to put this strong spring in place. So you need to be very gentle when you when you handle this uh, spring there because it can jump, and uh, yeah, you don't, you can spend a lot of time on your knee looking looking for it. So if you if you can avoid that, that's a, that's a good news. 
Okay, I carry on putting the putting the parts there. So so far so good on uh, on this movement, yeah. Except a bit of rust. We did not see anything uh, anything bad. Just placing this plate on top of it there, just aligning see aligning the holes where I can put uh, the screws that keep everything in place. Okay, so we are pretty close like to, to finishing this movement, but obviously after we'll have to do uh, a lot of work on, uh, on the case because it was uh, pretty rough. And uh, normally I don't like to, do, to, to touch too much cases on watches, even like vintage watches. I found that, you know, when you have a, a case which is obviously not too damaged, but like a bit uh, scratch or uh, it's part of uh, a vintage charm. Yeah, it's like, uh, that's why you buy a vintage watch as well. Um, yeah, it has a look, it has something unique, something different, or else you buy a new watch. Um, but I found that on a Cartier, you know, you need to look a bit, uh, yeah, a bit sparkly, you know, like a bit, uh, a bit uh, bling bling. So yeah, I will, uh, I will try to redo the case the best I can. And I will show you I, uh, how I, uh, try to redo the, the gold plating on, on this case. Okay. So now putting the pallet fork in place. Go, just checking like there if it's clicking when I put a bit of power. Yeah, it looks like it's clicking. So that's the uh, first test, so that's good. So now we can put the balance wheel and see if the movement is going to start or no. Just gently putting in place and we are going to make sure it sits on this uh, bottom jewel there. Just gently rotating there. Perfect, until it's in place. Yes, it started. Woo, that's a relief. And it's uh, yeah, it's not fully in place there, but obviously we will secure everything with uh, with the screw. When uh, the screw will be in place, it will uh, it will sit down there. Oh, you see, it just stopped that there. It just come back. It means it's not sitting properly. There we go. Like now it's sitting, and you see, it's still beating. Perfect. I'm going to oil all the, the rest of the jewels, which are not oiled, to make sure like to, to reduce the friction and reduce the wear as well of uh, all the pivot points of the different wheels. Okay, so now let's focus on the case, like I said. First, I'm going to remove the crystal. So it's pretty scratched, so I'm going to keep it because you see like it's uh, cut to shape. Yeah, we can see some old glue there, keeping the, the crystal in place. So I will remove that. And uh, I will polish the crystal and try to, to reuse it. So yeah, that's, uh, that will be the, one of the steps that I need to do on the, on the case. And you see there, is, this glue is uh, pretty annoying to remove. Okay, so the, that's the case back. So we, I want to redo the gold plating, but I don't want to polish the case back because if, if I do it with my polishing machine, the writing behind or the, the logo uh, can be can fade. So what I will do, I will just use a bit of sandpaper and just with a bit of sandpaper, polish it. And you can see the result there. I'll remove the gold plating, but the inscription is still looking good. Yeah. And obviously the edges, uh, like the round edges, this I will do them on my, uh, on my polishing machine. There we go, just to remove uh, as much as I can the gold plating and you can see there the, the shiny silver on the, on the case. There we go. So the first step for the gold plating, I will put all the parts, like the two parts, in a degreaser solution. I will leave them like for around 10 minutes in this uh, solution just to remove any fingerprints or any uh, uh, maybe oil or grease which are on the, on the, on the parts because if you still have that, um, after the coating will not uh, are there will not stick to the to the metal. Next step, I put them in a silver cleaning solution. So again, for ten minutes, just to make sure, remove any oxidation or anything on the silver. Just drain them, and we are going to do the first stage of plating. The first stage of plating on silver, I'm going to do a palladium plating because I cannot do gold plating straight away on silver. So for that, I will put uh, the parts in a solution. Uh, for for palladium plating, and I'm going to put uh, a current like a voltage through this uh, through the parts, 
So you can see me there increasing the, the, the voltage until he ran, he reached around 0.15 amps. Um, and there, the, the palladium plating you see is starting on the parts. So I will have to do the same thing on, uh, on both parts. The, this is the front part of the case. So here we go, now I'm removing the clip there and you can see the, the parts is very dark. And after a tiny bit of polishing, you see like it's a like kind of a gray color. We do the same thing on the, on the case back there. So the palladium plating on the, on the case back. Same again, so we are going to remove it and uh, just do a gentle clean uh, after the, the palladium plating. There we go, Here we, you see the part there. And after doing palladium, now I can do the gold plating because the gold will stick on palladium. It will not stick on the silver, but it will stick on palladium. So I do the same. I use a, like a bit more voltage on there. In a different solution, you see that it's a pink solution. Uh, I will do the gold plating on both sides of the both side of the case. So now I'm doing the case back. I did the front. Now I'm doing the case back. And here is finished. I'm just taking back, and you can see the gold there. And obviously, I will show you the, the finished product a bit later on. Okay, so I'm going to replace the crystal back. Uh, I polish the crystal. I'm going to place it back on the on the on the case. But first, I need to put a, a glue because he has this. Uh, this uh, square or more rectangle shape uh, crystal are glued in place. So for this, I use a UV glue. And as this name say in the UV, you need to cure the, the glue with UV. So I will leave it for like a, a minute or two under a UV light and uh, the glue will take this, uh, this strength. Okay, so the hand, you remember the hand was pretty rusty. So I will just do a gentle polish on the hand. I will clean them as well in a ultrasonic machine, see what's uh, See if he can help uh, removing the rust on uh, on this hand. I uh, place back the the dial. So the dial, I could not remove the rust on the dial, but I found it give a charm to the to the watch as well. Uh, give it a, a unique look. I did a polish on, uh, on a, a, a gentle polish on on the dial, um, but actually the, the rust is underneath the, the the layer, so I cannot get access to this. So here I'm putting the hour hand. You can see the hand actually they came out quite good. Yeah, I don't see any sign of rust anymore on the uh, on the hand. So that's uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, pretty pleased with the with the result. So I put the hour hand and now I'm putting the the minute hand that I will try to align at midnight. It's not easy to do on this watch because obviously there is no hours indicators. So I will try to align like in the middle of the the Cartier or the U of the must, which looks like is the middle there. So just press it in place. There we go. It's a minute and now it's in place. Just checking when I'm turning if the hand are not touching the dial or touching each other. Yeah, it looks good. Just check at three o'clock there if it's... Uh, yeah, it looks like it's pretty much aligned. So that's that's good. Okay, so now I'm placing back the movement and the dial into the, into the newly gold-plated case back. Like the, the color is like... You see, it's like... It was a bit faded, like like the a bit grayish, and now you see like the gold color popping out. Yeah, that's that's nice. And the crystals that I polish, uh, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with the result. Even if it's not perfect, I still need to to improve my uh, gold plating abilities, if you want. But yeah, I'm pretty pleased with the with the with the result there on the case. Actually, looks much better than uh, than at the beginning. It doesn't look brand new so that's as well that's uh that's nice because obviously it's a vintage watch so i want to, to make it look brand new uh but yeah i found it like yeah looks much better and you will have a, a nice a nice second life if you want and somebody will be able to enjoy it uh, uh, a lot more okay so here is a, the result on the time grapher you can see the amplitude is actually quite good uh, 286 85 the bit error is uh, low under uh, 0.4. I mean, under one for me is good. And uh, the yeah, the rate you see just three, losing three, two seconds per day. And here is the finished product, uh, fully uh, fully gold plated, polish uh, polish crystal, remove the rust. A very nice looking watch. So I hope you like this video, and I see you next time for my next project. Bye bye.